even at all. I thought I'd just take a bit of an opportunity. One of the comments from the last video was that the equipment that I use to build all my stuff. Um, so I thought I'd just go through and just show you and just explain uh, what I use and how simple it is. There is nothing more frustrating to me than watching somebody use half a million dollars worth of equipment, including plasma cutters, CNC routers, or uh, mills, or whatever the case may be. There's not the trade, there's not the quality left, or the craftsmanship to try and get something perfect these days just with manual tools. Um, so I wanted to go through and show you what the tools that I'm using here, and I guess you'd be very, very surprised to see they're just your run-of-the-mill cheap line tools. There is nothing special about them. I just wanted to start off with one of my favourite tools, which is a rafter square. If you ever see one of these in one of your hardware stores, pick one up. You cannot go wrong with a rafter square. It works as a straight edge, so that you can actually mark something against it. But also, too, it's down here, it's got degrees. And I'll go through a video of showing you how to set that up. Um, but what I'd encourage everybody to do is get onto YouTube and have a look at some of the videos that are there. There's a lot of people in the States who use this thing regularly, and it's an amazing tool. Um, quick grips. I just got these from Bunnings. They were on special one day. They're a wood clamp, but um, they work just as well for welding. And as you can see... <laughs> She's had a bit of heat in it um, on this other end here. But I've done everything like that with this trailer with these quick grips. Can't have the trusty chipping hammer because I don't have gas. I don't have gasless. I actually use an arc. Um, you can't do anything without a tape. So just a standard 8 metre tape. This little sucker here used to be a little Phillips head screwdriver. And obviously it got broken so what I did was I just ground that down on the grinder and make a scriber out of them they are the best scribers I've ever used and I've got heaps of them so I'd encourage you to do the same thing really cheap little texter now mentioned before we use an arc this little inverter uh, S180 from, I actually got this from Bunnings, it was cheap, I think I paid a little bit over 200 bucks for it. It has done a power of work, um, and I do welding in my business as well, so this machine, I've now got another one in my trailer, but uh, it's basically exactly the same, except that uh, it's got TIG capacities. But you probably notice, it's not a MIG, and it's not a gasless, it's an ARC. And... Um, you see some people that have got two and a half thousand, three thousand dollar welding machines and they're doing home repairs. Don't need them, just need this. Um, so the electrodes I use, uh, these are just a boss weld. So again, I get these from Bunnings because they're cheap. Um, and that's the only reason why I use the 716 low hydrogen. Or over in Australia, we call them TC16s. Um, they're not as good as a WIA electrode. But they do the job. Um, these are just two and a half mils. And I'm running this machine on about 70 amps, 75 amp. So they've got the orange um, packet. So I think they cost me around about $25 a box. Um, so, and that's all I use. Um, so what I'm trying to get across here is you don't need to be a millionaire to set yourself up. All you need to know is how to use machines on tools. So, and I, the thing I'm trying to get across to everybody is that I'm trying to do this on a budget. So, this grinder is another example of budget. It is a Ryobi 5 inch angle grinder, which I bought from Bunnings. They had them on special, and I bought a couple of them. I think they were $49 each. Um, so, I, I just bought them, and then, yeah, went from there. Um, and one thing that I've started to do, particularly on my tools, because I've had quite a few of them, I bought myself a set of punches. Um, and then what I did was I welded them together. 
with my business name, so Tim McCrellan Fixologist. Um, but what I what I did was I burn all this into the tools, so that's my identification. Um, so I'd encourage you to do the same thing. So this angle grinder here is only just a five inch, um, so I just buy the cheapest blades I can get. Um, Irwin's you can't get much cheaper than Irwin's. Um, I buy them by the pack of twenty five or whatever they are. They do really well. Um, and most of the stuff here has been cut by that, unless it's been cut by you know, a cut-off saw. Uh, just grinding wheels. And these, again, just from Bunnings, I just bought the Craft Right um, little um, flapper discs. These things are cheap, they're quick, um, and they replace like a linishing machine and what have you. Um, finally, finally, it's just a cut-off saw. And there's... There's the stamp on that one. So um, if somebody wants to pinch my tools, which I don't think they'll pinch these ones anyway because they're too cheap. Um, but, yeah, I just use a standard. This is just a regular cut-off saw. You can buy cold cut-off saws these days. Um, they're all the bits and pieces. But the way I look at it is the blades are worth a fortune. The machine's worth a fortune. So this cost me a little bit over 200 bucks, and it's $7 a blade. Um, and I've gone through on this entire project three blades. So it puts it in perspective. So there's just a list of the tools that I use. And it's, you know, look, like, I guess uh, my father, when I was growing up, taught me uh, a lot of the stuff that I know. And um, he started life with a hammer and a drill and a handsaw. And that's all he had as tools. And he built a house with that or did a renovation with that. And that's all he had. If you really wanted to add something to this, I'd add a string line um, just to make things straight. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the list of tools. Um, there's probably going to be people that are going to say there's no way no that that's all you're using. Well, the other things like obviously we've had to use drills uh, to drill holes and that sort of stuff, but um, you can just do them with a standard drill. Um, so that's the nature of the tools that, that I use. The only other thing, the one that I haven't shown, is the 1200 um, quick grip. Uh, that just replaces the old style threaded um, bracing grip. Um, so, yeah. Um, so there's my tools. Feel free to comment. I even have a laugh if you want. But I just wanted to sort of get across there that you don't need a huge amount of tools to build something. And everybody's going to tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. But just what's on this bench here is enough to build anything that you wanted to. Um, and 400, 450, if there's lucky, it's probably $600 worth of tools here just sitting on this bench. So, and that's, that sort of put it, puts it into perspective. I like my inverter welders. Um, I think they're smoother. But you could use an old pie warmer if you wanted to, the old AC arc, um, and what have you. But you don't need MIGs, you don't need gasless, you don't need anything like that. You just need to know how to weld. Now, with welding, obviously, what you want to be able to do is get a good bead. So that's a critical thing. And it's all practice. So, um, like even some of the like, you know, guys like IC Weld and that sort of stuff, uh, that's on YouTube, and I recommend anybody who wants to improve uh, their welding is to watch that guy, um, and also weld.com. I think those two two sites are exceptionally good at um, helping you build your skills and teaching you how to do it. So um, being on YouTube, I can comfortably say that I've learned a lot from YouTube and what I'm trying to do now is pass on what I've done. All right, leave your comments, have a laugh, and I'll talk to you later.